Good morning. This is Dr. Rajesh Mehra, and I'm so happy that you've decided to join us this morning. I am honored and privileged to have with me uh, today Mr. Frank Islam, who was a proud owner of a company called QSS, which he sold for millions of dollars. Now he has opened up another company, and rather than me do the talking, I want to introduce you to him and let him do the talking. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Mayor. I really appreciate that very, very much. And I know that you have a very busy type schedule, but we appreciate a few moments we can spend because I want our community to get to know who you are, even though you've won so many awards, too many for me to list here, everything from Entrepreneur of the Year and so forth. Our community needs to know that we have prominent entrepreneurs like you here. So well, thank you very, very much. So to begin with, Mr. Islam, tell us a little background about yourself. I know that I have read you have degrees from University of Colorado in, in computer science, but how does one get from degrees uh, from computer science to be the entrepreneur of the year? Uh, uh, I have a, my name is Frank Islam. I'm the chairman and CEO of the uh, FY Investment Group, and I graduated from University of Colorado in Boulder, and after that I worked uh, for uh, Computer Sciences Corporations and Raytheon. Through that experience, uh, I gained unique insight, knowledge, and experience to understand and how to manage the projects that associated with the uh, information technology and engineering services. And I wanted to take a challenge to start a new companies. Okay. It was the sheer thrill, thrill, fun challenge of starting something from scratch, from scratch and growing it to a large enterprise. I felt it was rewarding, it was a challenging, and I was ready for the new challenges. So and you opened it when? QSS? I opened QSS in 1994. I grew it to $300 million. $300 million. Correct. Okay. Uh, and I sold it in the year 2007. Seven. So you've just recently sold that, and that's why now you opened FI Investing Company. Correct. Uh, after I sold, I was looking for new challenges in my life, and I was ready for the new phase in my life. And uh, I, I believe that I had the experience, okay. as well as the entrepreneurial skills to start something new from this, what I consider about the FIIG. So uh -huh. we can talk a little bit more about what FIIG does later sure, on. Sure, absolutely. So now you're sort of in the retirement, but looking for new work, new kind of new ventures. Well, first of all, I believe I'm not in retirement mode. I still have a lot of, uh, a lot of energy left and uh, have a positive energy and optimism. Uh, the FI Investment Corporations that I created uh, that I felt uh, was important for me to get into the new venture. Mm -hmm. And the new venture that we have with FI Investment Companies and a holding company that gets into the, that uh, has, uh, that invests into the domestic as well as international market and assets, and uh, it includes a senior debt, mezzanine debt, stocks and bonds, mm -hmm. as well as it also includes venture capital as well. Great. How is it different from other investment, zillion of investment companies that are out there? Well, first of all, we looked at the, we looked at the management of the company. Uh -huh. We looked at the, uh, we usually buy the company that is uh, privately held corporations or the, privately, or the publicly held corporation. We looked at their margins. We looked at the if the management team has some skin in the game. And, and we, we're looking for to increase the value of the corporations. Mm -hmm. So by looking at the management, by looking at the EBITDA, by looking at the growth, by looking at how much management has, uh, has a share in the company, we, we, we call what we call a capital infusion uh, debt to the corporations. Mm -hmm. And then we convert that debt into equity, and then we sell that after a couple of years. Or we usually park the uh, our money for about two or three years. After that, I would like to get my return on my investment. Of course, that's what it's all about, isn't right. it? Right. Yeah, there'd be so many people out there that'd love to do that. So currently, I also understand that you are sort of diversifying in your interests with a little bit of health care, because health care is a good industry to get into, depending on what it is, that you also started some investments and endeavors into that area. Well, the FI Investment Group uh, owns the... Uh, healthcare business, which is a modality center, which is a CT scan business. I see a lot of promises there. I see a lot of, uh, uh, I see a lot of uh, excitement in that industry, and especially the wellness part of that. And unfortunately, uh, the company has not been very profitable, but I believe we're getting there. And I believe, I believe there's a lot of uh, energy among the people who are working over there. 
and we would like to diversify that portfolio from other healthcare business as well because I see it's very promising. It's a one trillion dollar industry, right. healthcare industry. It's oh, it's, a, it's, it's a, a wonderful, it's a, it's a wonderful big. asset to exploit right now. Absolutely, and with our population getting older, with healthcare insurance changes coming about, I think if you hit it in the right direction, uh, that'll be very successful um, business to get into. I, t I totally agree with that. In addition to all this making money and making it profitable, uh, we are linked by common goals and bounded by common bonds to serve, our, to serve the humanity. That's it's a right. good thing to do to serve it's, humanity. There's nothing wrong if you're making money and doing it the right way to help somebody. That is all true. That should be the eventual Dr. goal anyway. That's how I see things. So where does you see Frank Islam five years from now? That's, I guess, the burning question. Uh, another major endeavor like QSS or just kind of different diversifications? Well, I like to, I like to continue what we're doing, and I like to see that uh, we have a good return on our investment. I like to expand our healthcare business. I do have a non-compete with the Pro Systems Corporation when I sold the company, mm -hmm. uh, and for another year and a half, and after that one is uh, completed uh, and we don't have a non-compete, I, I would like to buy the company. Some. Uh, information technology some other business, technology okay. some information technology the government contracting or the software business and I wouldn't want to run that company but I would like to have people who can run it and I would like to give some shares to the management so the management will be enthusiastic Happy. and 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 they will be passionate and they'll be focused and they'll be energized and they'll be able to take it to the next level right now where do you think IT businesses these days I know with the down up and down in the economy 9-11 happened, there was all these dot-coms that sort of went out and dot-coms came. Now do you see an uprise in the uh, IT business? Or has it never gone down? <laughs> well, as far as I know, it, it never went down. Okay. The, the, uh, I'm most familiar with the information technology business uh, and the engineering business in the government contracting arena. And the government spends billions and billions of dollars right. into the information technology. They will continue to open the, they will continue to spend the money for the for the information technology, I think it's a great place to be. There is a lot of potential to grow. Uh, in addition to the information technology, I believe the healthcare sector in the government contracting business is pretty healthy, very promising, and uh, have a lot of potential to grow. Absolutely, I agree with that. Being in the healthcare myself, I see that a lot of potential. Now, what about the community? How do you sort of visualize where our community is going? Well, the community involvement uh, to me is a very important part of my life. I'm, I'm fortunate, I'm blessed. Yes. And people like myself, who have been very successful entrepreneurs, successful businessmen, it is a noble cause to serve our community. Uh, I'm committed, deeply committed to education of our young generations. Excellent. As you probably know, the education empowers people, right. education uplifts the people from poverty. Education is key ingredient of success because it provides an upper mobility to the people. It enhances people's uh, respect. It gives a dignity to the human being. Uh, as a result of uh, my commitment to the education as well as involvement in the community, I've just, I have a foundation. Yeah, you do. Okay. Uh, and as well as a charity organization. The charity organization focuses on building hospitals and the schools in India uh -huh. uh, I, I love the country. I was born there. I think it's a great thing to do. India, India, India has a lot of poverty. Poverty crushes the hope of the people. Right. Uh, and, and there's no question about it. There's a lot of poverty in India. We must do what we can to eradicate the poverty. And the other part of my foundation focuses on, on education. Okay. Uh, when I say education, we're talking about giving a scholarship program to the students uh, who have financial hardship, who cannot mm -hmm. go to school. So that focuses on that. It, it is important for our, uh, uh, for all of us, to educate our new generation. As Mr. Nehru once said, Dr. Mehra, mm -hmm. we should do what we can to build a noble mansion for our young children. Beautifully said. And, and so that they can prosper, so they can have a bright future, is the future that beckons to us all. That's right. If we don't build it now, then it, it won't be there. They are the hope for tomorrow. We must create an environment that allows our children to excel and education is the way to excel. Any particular part of India where you're focusing or sort of all over? Well, since I'm from northern part of India, since I'm from uh, UP, which is one of the provinces in India, which is close uh -huh. to Delhi, that's where my focus is, that's where I was that's born. That's where you were born. And that's what I have a, 
I have a focus right now, but I would like to expand to other, other parts of India as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I see India as a one country. It now doesn't matter where, right. right? Right. What city were you born in? I was born in Aligarh. Aligarh, which okay. is not too far from uh, from Agra. Delhi. Yeah. Oh, Agra is about right. 75 miles. As right. a matter of fact, I just went to India after 20 years. It was a great journey for me. It was very su successful. It was memorable. I enjoyed every minute of it. But despite quite the changed. fact, despite the fact, was it dusty? But but it was wonderful. Memorable. Quite changed from what you remember. I yes, bet. it was a quite quite changed. advanced. It was quite advanced. Uh, uh, it was. There's no question. Uh, the the traffic was. Uh, there was a lot of jam in the traffic. There was right. a lot of problems. But but you know the infrastructure is still is a major problem in India. And I uh, you know. Uh, and I don't think, to be honest with you, that'll ever change. I mean, India can be one of the leading economic countries, which it has become now. You know, second to China. But this infrastructure will take years, years, and years to change. I totally agree with you. But uh, India has started that, right. and they're on the right path. Uh, the, 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 they will be the tiger of Asia one day, and the world. Oh, absolutely. And people look at India uh, as one of the promising global economy of the world. Yeah, the they're the major engine of the global economy right now. Right. The rest of the countries are going down, and India is going up. And I hope it stays circuit. that way, right. because, uh, because the fact that it is a very promising land, and I love the, I love the country, and I think we, we like to see India prosper and become a wonderful country for the people to live. Well, but, we, but we should dismantle the barriers of the caste and creed or religious-based system. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to be done just because people are making more money. That is correct. That's kind of where the e ideological things have to change I over totally time. agree with that. So and because people have a cell phone and a television doesn't mean their, their thinking is going to change, you know? Uh, 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 there is no question so. about that. But poverty does not belong in a civilized human society. Its right. proper place is in a museum. That's what it should be. That's where it belongs. Absolutely. And we must eradicate poverty from India. And like you said, the basis of that is education, right? If people that is get correct. educated, education. then, then they're, they're, that will be reduced. In any developed country around the world where there is a lot of education, there's very little poverty. I mean, uh, they sort of go hand in hand. No question about so. that. Uh, the uh, education is a key ingredient of success. Well, this has been a very uh, interesting and a fruitful conversation that we've had. I'd love to get you back on the show. Our time is running out and, and talk about so many other issues that I think our audience may find very uh, interesting. So thank you again. Well, you, you're most welcome, and thank you very much uh, for listening. I appreciate that very much, and I'd love to come back again and talk with you Absolutely. and share my vision and my values, what I believe in it. Absolutely. We'll definitely do it again, sir. Thank you.